Welcome to this walkthrough guide to using the Turing Scheme application portal. This video guide has been produced to help organisations complete their applications for the academic year 2023-2024. to This video is applicable to all three sectors eligible to take part in the Turing Scheme, HE, FE and VET and schools. Before we start, here are a few points to consider. Completing the form. Only applications written in the English language will be accepted. Applications in any other language will be rejected. You can only submit your application once, it can't be resubmitted. You don't have to complete the application form in one go. You can save at any time before completion or submission using the save button. You'll find this at the bottom of each page. You can copy text into the form from other online and offline documents. You will be disconnected from the application portal if the screen is idle for more than 30 minutes. Navigating the form. Use the buttons at the top of the form or other links throughout to navigate. Do not use your browser's forward or back buttons. You can use a mouse or the tab key to move through the form. The form also works with a screen reader. You will move through the form in order. You cannot jump forward to the next section. You can check progress at any time in the application overview screen. You will be disconnected from the application portal if the screen is idle for more than 30 minutes. Let's take a look at the application form in more detail starting with the signing in process. Sign in using your registered email address and password. You'll see the dashboard. To start your application, click on the Your Application link. You will be taken to the Application Overview screen, where you will see the status of each section of your application. As you work through each section and save your entries, the status of each section will change to completed on the Application Overview screen. Please read the introduction to the application form before proceeding to the next stage. To advance to the next screen, click on the Project Overview link. Project Overview. Select the relevant sector for funding. You can choose from schools, higher education, further education and vocational education and training. Make sure that you select the appropriate funding stream for your application. If you work across more than one sector, you will need to submit separate applications for each funding stream. Give your project a name, then click Save and Continue. Please ensure the name is relevant to your project's mobilities or organisation. The name will not be assessed. Please provide a clear summary of your plans. You will need to include information on all key elements of the project as outlined on the screen. There is a 500 word limit for your summary. Project summaries should be written in plain English and may be published as a case study. Once you've provided a summary for your project, click Save and Continue. Organisation details. Here you are asked if you are part of a multi-academy trust. Choose yes or no. If you answer no, you'll move to the next question. If you answer yes, you must name the multi-academy trusts by clicking on the add name of multi-academy trust button. Once you've finished, press save and continue. Next, you need to tell us if you are applying on behalf of a mobility consortium. For more guidance on Mobility Consortia, please check the eligibility criteria of the programme guide. Choose yes or no. If you answer no, you will move to the next section. If you answer yes, please explain how the consortium coordinator is linked to the educational organisations involved in your project. Your response will not be assessed. Press save and continue. Are there any partner organisations involved in your project? Then you need to tell us about them. A project partner is an organisation you are visiting as part of the mobility group placement. Choose yes or no. If you choose no, you'll move to the next section. If you choose yes, please add details of your partner organisations. If you need to add more than one, once you had finished filling in the first partner's details, click on Add Partner Organisation. On the next screen, if you are not the education provider for your learners, 
but your expertise facilitates education mobilities, for example, you are a third party provider, you will be required to submit evidence of a partnership with at least one college or school. This evidence could be in the form of a letter of intent, signed by the education provider, outlining a commitment to work together to facilitate and deliver some or all of the Turing Scheme mobilities outlined in your application. Click on Choose File, browse to the file's location and click on Upload. You can upload PDF, JPEG and PNG file types up to a maximum size of 5 megabytes. Your evidence will display when uploaded. Click Save and Continue to move to the next section. Qualitative Questions The next few sections cover the qualitative questions and apply to all sectors. There are 13 questions in total, but only 11 will be qualitatively assessed. Please review the Qualitative Criteria section of the Application Guide and refer to the Turing Scheme Programme Guide for more information. The first set of qualitative questions relate to the positive impacts and value for money delivered by your proposals. Projects should offer unique career building opportunities. They should deliver the hard and soft skills looked for by employers and to help to bridge the gap between education and work. There are five questions in this section. Each has a 500 word limit and each question is independently weighted. This section has an overall weighting of 30% of the total project score. Let's explore the questions and the marks awarded for each answer. What are the aims and objectives of your project and how do they link to your organisation's priorities? This question will be scored out of 10. As with each question, once you've entered your answer, press save and continue. You can also save and return to the application overview. What kind of learning outcomes do you expect your learners to gain? This question will be scored out of 5. How will your project further impact your learners? This question will be scored out of 5. Describe how you will review placements for continuous improvement. This question will also be scored out of 5. How does your project deliver value for money and align with wider government priorities? Up to 5 points can be awarded based on your answer to this question. Now, let's move on to questions designed to elicit answers to how you will promote levelling up. This section is about how your project supports social mobility and widens access to pupils, learners and students affected by disadvantage. Projects should help and promote equal access and opportunities to all learners, regardless of their background or circumstances. There are two questions in this section, and each question is equally weighted, giving 15 points each. This section has an overall weighting of 30% of the total project score. The first question in this section asks how you will ensure your project selection process is fair and offers equal access to overseas placements. Question 2 asks, how will you support your learners who are disadvantaged from underrepresented groups or those with additional educational needs? As with previous answers, once you have entered your answer, press save and continue you can also save and return to the application overview. This section will cover the international scope of your project. You should demonstrate the quality or potential of your partnership and its commitment to strengthening UK international relations. There are four questions in this section, but only two will be qualitatively assessed. This section has an overall weighting of 20% of your final score. Firstly, how will your project improve existing partnerships or encourage new partnerships across the world? This question will be scored out of 10. Press save and continue to move to the next question. You can also save your answer and return to the application overview. The next question is also scored out of 10. What are your partner's key responsibilities when delivering your project, including the individual mobility groups they will work on? Similarly, the next question asks if any of your mobility groups are to take place with a reciprocal international mobility partner. Reciprocal partnerships can include simple activities such as overseas individuals travelling to the UK as part of the partnership. Reciprocal activities do not need to be of similar scale. 
and it is recognised that you may not have the final details at this stage. Answer yes or no. Selecting yes will lead to a follow-up question. If you answer no, you will move to the next section. If you answer yes, the next question will ask how many reciprocal learners you expect to come to the UK. This question is not qualitatively assessed. Please provide a numerical answer. The next section will cover the design of your project and the implementation and monitoring of activities. You should provide a justification for any decisions made as part of your project plan. There are two questions in this section. Each question is equally weighted, offering 10 points each. Overall, the section is worth 20% of your total score. These questions aim to gather information on your management skills and the proposals you have in place to measure achievement. The first question of this section seeks details of how you will manage the mobility groups. Next, you will be asked how you will monitor performance against your plan during the project lifecycle. Again, once you have entered your answer, press Save and Continue. Alternatively, you can also save and return to the application overview. This section gives you the opportunity to provide a detailed description of your project mobility groups. A mobility group is defined as a collection of individual learners who are undertaking the same type of mobility in the same month to the same destination country. You will need to repeat these steps for all your mobility groups. The information in this section will automatically generate your project plan. This will provide you with a schedule for your project, including points for requesting payments from the delivery partner. In this section, you get to provide an overview of your mobility groups. To begin, select Add a Mobility Group. Next, name your mobility group. Select a name for the mobility group so you can easily identify it. For example, traineeship to Germany or skills competition to Iceland. Once you have entered your answer, press Save and Continue. You can also save and return to the mobility group overview. The next screen asks about the timings for your mobility group activities. Select the month and year your mobility group will start. On the next screen, provide a summary of your mobility group. This only needs to be a short high level summary and should outline what participants will do whilst undertaking the mobility as well as your aims and objectives. Advancing to the next page will let you identify the type of mobility group. The options available will be dependent on the funding stream you are applying for. The options available include, in the HE sector, Learner Mobility Traineeship or Learner Mobility Study. In the FE VET sector, Studies Mobility, Traineeship Mobility, Skills Competition. And lastly, in the school sector, Pupil Short-Term Mobility, Pupil Long-Term Mobility. Identify the total number of learners who are participating in the mobility group. This must be a numerical answer. Next, identify the number of disadvantaged students that will participate in the mobility group. This is a subgroup of the total number of learners who will be participating in the mobility group. Please see Annex A of the Programme Guide for the definition of disadvantage. Identify the number of learners with special educational needs and disabilities, SEND, that will participate in the mobility group. This is a subgroup of the total number of learners who will be participating. Please see Annex B of the Programme Guide for the definition of SEND. Identify the duration of your mobility group. Please refer to the Mobility Duration section under Important Reminders in the Application Guide for details of the minimum duration. The final step is to select the country your mobility group will take place in. This will be used to automatically calculate the cost of living. Once you have entered your answer, press Save and Continue. You can also save and return to the Mobility Group Overview. This short section is only applicable to FEVET and school sectors. It asks if you have any accompanying staff joining your mobility group. Accompanying staff includes anyone who is not a learner and is there in a safeguarding capacity. Answer yes or no. Selecting yes will lead to a follow-up question. If you answer no, you will move to the next section. 
if you answer yes, enter the number of accompanying staff and their role. The next section is important as it addresses your travel costs. This section will calculate the cost of any travel. Help for travel costs is available for the following participants. HE participants from disadvantaged backgrounds, all participants from the FE vet sector and all participants from the school sector. Answer yes or no. If you answer no, you will move to the next section. Selecting yes will lead to a follow-up question. If you answer yes, you will need to indicate the outbound distance between your starting location and destination. Please note, travel cost distance bands are a straight line calculation and should be calculated using Google Maps. Funding is provided for an individual's round trip and will be automatically calculated. You should only enter travel funding request once for each individual participant. For those with special educational needs and disabilities, SEND, the scheme will fund up to 100% of actual costs for support directly related to their additional needs. Answer yes or no. If you answer no, you will move to the next section. Selecting yes will lead to a follow-up question. The criteria for additional costs can vary between different sectors. Please refer to Annex B of the Programme Guide for eligibility criteria for SEND participants. In the follow-up question, you will need to provide details of the support you will need for learners with SEND. Additional costs are paid at actual cost rather than a per participant rate, so please enter the estimated total figure. Where a payment of actual costs take place, evidence to justify the payment will be requested by the delivery partner. Additionally, participants should not be in receipt of this funding if they have already received funding for the same purpose from another source. Please see the double funding section of the guide for further information. We now come to exceptional costs that might be incurred by your project. Typically, these will be paid to participants from disadvantaged backgrounds across all sectors. Exceptional costs are calculated on an annual cost basis and are specifically for any additional costs incurred to support the participation of disadvantaged participants. Funding covers costs such as passports, visas and insurance as necessary. Answer yes or no. If you answer no, you will move to the next section. Selecting yes will lead to a follow-up question. If you answered yes, you will need to provide details of the support you require. Additional costs are paid at actual cost rather than a per participant rate, so please enter the estimated total figure. Where a payment of actual costs takes place, evidence to justify the payment will be requested by the delivery partner. If your project is taking you to a remote or expensive location, funding may be available to offset these exceptionally expensive travel costs. This funding is specifically to support expensive travel if applicants can justify that the standard funding for travel under the Turing Scheme does not cover at least 70% of the travel costs of the following participants. HE participants from disadvantaged backgrounds, all participants from the FE vet sector and all participants from the school sector. Answer yes or no. If you answer no, you will move to the next section. Selecting yes will lead to a follow-up question. If you selected yes, you will need to provide details of the support you need. Additional costs are paid at actual cost rather than a per participant rate, so please enter the estimated total figure. Please note, Assessors will reduce the expensive travel cost claim if the request is considered too large or a clear justification has not been provided. Applicants must therefore provide a detailed justification and breakdown of their claim. If you have FE or VET learners, you may qualify to receive additional linguistic support. Linguistic support refers to language preparation for placements over 19 days undertaken by FE VET learners only before their placement starts. 
Linguistic support is provided as a financial grant to cover expenses such as classroom courses or learning materials for the language used within the host organisation, as well as day-to-day -day vocabulary in the language of the host country. This is intended to ensure learners will be ready to live and work in a different environment. Answer yes or no. If you answer no, you will move to the next section. Selecting yes will lead to a follow-up question. If you answered yes, you must identify how many of your FE and VET participants require linguistic support. The total grant will be automatically calculated and displayed in the Mobility Group Overview. Before moving on from the Mobility Group section, check all the information you have provided is accurate. If you wish to change any information, click Change to edit any question. You will not be able to change your answers after you save. Once you are content with the information, click Save and Continue. This will take you to the Mobility Group Overview page. Once you have submitted your first Mobility Group, you will be returned to the Mobility Group's Overview page. If you have another Mobility Group to add, click on the green Add Mobility Group link. You will then need to input the information related to the new Mobility Group. When you have added a new mobility group, it will be shown on the Mobility Group Overview screen. Once you have entered all your mobility groups, click on Mark as Complete. Once you have marked as complete, you will not be able to add any more mobility groups. The Points of Expenditure section of the application form applies to all sectors. This question will ask you to identify the anticipated point of expenditure for each month you have mobility groups starting. The payments can be triggered up to a maximum of three months in advance. The earliest date you can receive payment is August 2023. Next, identify your anticipated point of expenditure for organisational support. You will be asked to identify the anticipated point of expenditure for when you want to receive your organisational support payments. This is paid only once and can be requested up to a maximum of six months before the first month in which you have your mobility group starting. The earliest date you can receive payment is August 2023. Enter the month and year you wish to receive your organisational support payment. On the following screen, you will need to provide a summary of what you will use organisation support for. This refers to any cost directly linked to the implementation of the project, excluding travel, cost of living for participants and additional costs. It may be used to cover costs related to the selection and preparation, pedagogical, intercultural and linguistic of participants, and the monitoring and supporting of participants during the activity and the validation of learning outcomes. You can, where relevant, Share organisational support funds with partner organisations that incur costs. Your response to this question will not be qualitatively assessed. Let's take a look at the automatically generated project plan and budget summary. This will be generated based on the information you have provided in your application. Please make sure you check the project plan thoroughly before continuing. Click continue to move to the next screen which will detail the budget summary for each mobility group. The budget summary will be automatically generated based on the information you have provided for each mobility group and your points of expenditure. Click continue to move to the final declaration section. You can also save and return to the application overview. It is important that you are aware of the uses the Turing scheme and its partners will make of the data you provide. At this point, Please read the privacy notice for the Turing scheme and complete the declaration at the bottom of the page. On this screen, we ask for details of the legal representative. The Turing scheme needs to take details of the person who will be legally responsible for the project and funding. Please complete the details of your legal representative. You have now added most of the information that we require to make a decision on funding your project. It's time to make your declaration statement. Please read the declaration carefully. 
If the legal representative, applicant organisation or project value is incorrect, please edit the information provided in the application. Please select whether the organisation you represent is a public body or a private body. The legal representative will need to confirm acceptance of the conditions by adding their name and ticking Agree. This video is focused on showing you how to use the application portal. However, you will also need to download and complete the Financial Management and Governance Declaration that forms Annex E of the Programme Guide. This declaration must be completed fully and signed by the Chief Finance Officer or someone with appropriate delegated authority. To add a scan of this document to your application, click on Choose File, browse to the file's location and click on Upload. Please note, all arrangements must be in place before any funded activity takes place. The delivery partner has the right to request a copy of all supporting documentation at any time. Once it has been uploaded, you will see this screen. Click Save and Continue to submit your application. You can also save and return to the application overview. Before you finally submit your project for evaluation, you have the opportunity to check all aspects of your application. This is important as applications may not be resubmitted. We accept the first submission of an application as final. Only once you are satisfied with all aspects of your application, click Submit. Your dashboard will show your application as complete. You will receive a confirmation email. Please check your spam or junk folder. If you have not received a confirmation within 24 hours, please contact us by email quoting your reference number. The email address you need is turing scheme at capita.com. Once your application has been submitted, you can click on Return to Dashboard. Thank you for watching this step-by-step -step guide. If you have any remaining questions on how to complete your application to the Turing Scheme, please contact the Helpline Centre at turing-scheme at capita.com.